My name is Dr. Boon Lim. I'm a consultant cardiologist and electrophysiologist and the clinical lead for the Imperial Syncope Diagnostic Unit based at Hammersmith Hospital in London. So syncope is a loss of consciousness or a blackout. And this is when you typically uh, faint or lose consciousness. And it can arise from a number, for a number of reasons. The uh, major reason to exclude is a cardiac syncope where there is a problem or an abnormality with the heart or the heart rhythm or pump function that creates syncope. And this is typically something that should be considered a red flag symptom and one that prompts a visit to your cardiologist for further attention. But by and large, the most or the, ma the major reason for syncope is vasovagal syncope. And this is characterized normally by a transient blackout or a transient loss of consciousness. And the recovery should be rapid and with rapid recovery from the confused state afterwards. Now, vasovagal syncope is the most common reason for fainting, affecting almost one in two individuals in their lifetime. That is 50% of the population at some stage will develop an episode of vasovagal syncope. And this is typically due to two things. One, you, ha you have a low blood pressure, which makes it difficult for the brain to be perfused enough with oxygen and you lose consciousness. Or the second reason is that you have a low heart rate, which means the heart is not pumping with sufficient speed to get enough oxygen to your brain and you pass out. Syncope can typically be diagnosed by taking a very careful history. If you meet with your healthcare professional, whether it be a nurse, your GP or somebody in the emergency department, features in your history can be very helpful in assessing the reasons and coming up with a diagnosis of syncope. Now, the key things that you need to bear in mind as a patient when you present with syncope is try and remember what were the conditions, firstly, what were the conditions that led to you developing that syncopal attack. Secondly, remember in the, in the first or in the prior 10 seconds before you lost consciousness what you were doing, how you were feeling, for example, whether you were sweaty, dizzy, you felt nauseous or you felt palpitations. The diagnosis can normally be made by a history given very clearly and taken very clearly, but also with a clinical examination. And this can be something like taking your blood pressure whilst you're lying down and standing up, but also listening to your chest to exclude a cardiac murmur. The final bit uh, that your healthcare professional should be doing if you have an episode of loss of consciousness is an ECG which is a simple test that involves some sticky electrodes on your chest to uh, have a look at the electrical system of your heart. So in summary, syncope can, diagnose, can be diagnosed by firstly a history, secondly a physical examination, and thirdly an ECG. The question is how can syncope be treated? And the answer is it depends on the cause. First and foremost, we need to exclude a cardiac cause of syncope. And by that I mean whether or not you've had a cardiac arrhythmia or a heart rhythm abnormality or whether uh, there is a structural problem with the heart, whether it isn't pumping so well or for example if you have a tight valve like aortic stenosis. These conditions can be treated fairly effectively by your cardiologist. The most common cause of syncope, which is vasovagal syncope, can also be treated fairly readily by easy steps which are mainly down to you. So what we call conservative advice are things that I like to prescribe for free, that you can do for free. When I say for free, I really do mean that you can do it yourself. Firstly, fluids. Make sure that you're drinking enough fluid, how much? Two and a half to three liters a day. And make sure that fluid is front loaded towards the early part of the day when you've just woken up from bed having lost some uh, fluid overnight either by making urine or by sweating and evaporating under the covers. So hydration is key. Secondly, understand what your blood pressure is and it's very typical that in patients with vasovagal syncope that there is a, that there is a low or low normal blood pressure. In this regard it's not harmful 
and actually recommended that you have more salt in your diet. Now how much salt is more salt? 6 to 10 grams, which should be about 1 to 2 teaspoonfuls of salt in your diet, typically also front-loaded, i.e. at breakfast time and at lunch time. Thirdly and importantly, you need to be aware of the situations that could provoke syncope. Most patients have uh, certain provoking factors that they can describe, for example, having alcohol or being in a warm, hot environment or standing still for a long time. And if these are your triggers and you recognize these triggers, please try and avoid being in that situation that might provoke syncope. The other important aspect about preventing syncope is for you to prevent injury. If you have a prodrome and you are standing up, for example, in a place which is not safe, for example, next to a railing or a table, or when you're coming down the stairs, please sit down immediately. Your body will immediately improve the blood pressure when you sit down because syncope is something that is due to venous pooling of your blood. So when you stand up and blood pools down, it literally takes blood from your brain and your heart and pushes it down into your lower limbs. Therefore, getting down to the ground, lying down or seating, sitting down and elevating your feet is going to be crucial in helping you feel better and abort syncope and possibly avoid injury. And those are the top tips for avoiding and treating syncope. So STARS provide an excellent resource for syncope patients. There are numerous booklets that you can get on the STARS website that are written in very simple to understand language that you can download and read and understand more about your condition. There is also a very effective syncope blackouts checklist that you should try and download and fill in before your appointment to see your syncope doctor. Sleep is often affected in patients with POTS or who have vasovagal syncope. And in my experience, the sleep problems that occur in these conditions mainly occur because you're hypervigilant, which means your, your brain hasn't been potentially active enough all day and so becomes very active at night. And my biggest advice to patients who are having sleep difficulties is try to set a routine in the daytime that sets you up for sleeping at night. I will say that we evolved to be bipedal animals. That means standing upright on two legs. If you're lying down in bed all day, there is something that changes within your physiology. And there is the lack of the diurnal variation in blood pressure and in hormones that secrete to keep you relaxed, for example, to want to make you sleep. And these are typically called melatonin. And when your sleep cycle is disturbed because you're spending a lot of time in a day, for example, resting or trying to sleep or feeling unwell with the symptoms of vasovagal syncope or POTS, so it can affect your nighttime routine because you've not really engaged very much in the daytime. This is a challenge and it's something that you should try and uh, get help by taking on a very firm routine in the daytime. And it's the best way, therefore, to get you in the mood for sleep when time comes.